very pleasant evening to you out there. Many thanks for joining us on another edition of the program National Talk on Equa Television International. My name is Joyce Jakada, and tonight on National Talk, you will recall that on Monday, some women and youths in their numbers took to the streets and blocked the Pagungu axis of Minabida Road in the Niger State capital city, protesting against hunger and the high cost of living. The women carrying placard with the inscription, No Food, We Are Dying of Hunger, demanded a better condition of living and a reduction in the cost of living for the citizenry. On Wednesday, police public relations officer Wasiu Abiodum confirmed the arrest of one Aisha Jibril, the initiator of the protest, and 24 other suspects. Relatedly, Kanu State Governor Abba Yusuf lamented on Monday that many people in his state were living in misery amid starvation and acute hunger. Yusuf said inflation had terribly outplaced incomes resulting in debt as several residents could not cope with the rising cost of living. In a statement issued by the National Publicity Secretary of APC, Felis Moka, in Abuja on Tuesday, the ruling party accused opposition parties of being the brain behind the protests, which it claimed were not mere coincidence. Moka added that it was a desperate move to portray the APC-led administration as underperforming. Reacting, the National Publicity Secretary of the People's Democratic Party, Ibrahim Abdullahi, mocked the ruling party, stating that governance is the responsibility an individual organization owns the followers that come with consequences. This was even as Abdullahi expressed concern that the nation is under siege following the rising cost of living, insecurity, and free fall of Nera. The earlier protests forced President Bola Ahmed Tinubu to order a food intervention to check the shortage of food in the country. On National Talk tonight, I'm being joined by Professor Elias Nankap Lanley of the Center for Conflict Management and Peace Studies, University of Joss. Good evening and welcome to National evening, Talk. Joyce. It feels good to have you despite your busy schedule. It's an honor. Welcome to the show. Well, it is no news that Nigeria is actually um, facing food crisis. And then when you check the inflation rate, according to MBS, is at 33.3%. There's unemployment. Most um, small businesses are already packing up because they cannot cope with the reality in, in, that, that Nigeria is actually faced with. Some people have said, oh, about 63% of Nigerians are living in poverty and more are going to be in that same line. And some people are linking it to some of the economic policies of this um, current administration. You will recall that it was in, on May 29th that the president, on the same day that he was actually um, inaugurated, he said that first subsidy is gone. A, a lot of issues around floating near exchange rates that... Um, according to this administration, were things that were going to st stabilize the economy and all of that. Though some people are saying, yeah, for, for development to come, uh, for you to feel an impact of, of any new policy, you must go through some of these challenges. But this is like nine months down the line, and Nigerians are already touring the streets, saying we are hungry. And when you check the street of Kano, Kogi, Ondo, Abuja, Mina, People are on the streets. From Monday, we saw different uh, forms of protest. In fact, on the same Monday, while there was protest, uh, Mina, uh, one was ongoing in Kano State, and we, we saw how that the governor himself lamented how people were even dying in a state of hunger. I, I just want to get your reaction on the current reality that Nigeria is faced with. New administration, nine months down the line, but hunger is actually looming. I'll begin by saying that somebody gave Nigeria a very great credit by saying that 63% of Nigerians are living in the poverty line. Mm. I mean, from a global index, we are more than 80 to 90% on a poverty line because the poverty line is about one dollar a day. How much mm. is a dollar now? We're talking about almost 100 and what, and we are far, far below 1,500 1, naira, mm. the issue of the poverty index. So we're, we're, we're far, far below the index that some people are predicting. The reality is that Nigeria faced a very, 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 very unprepared issue. Mm. I call it unprepared because you don't jack up issues and make decisions without looking at the ramification of the decision. Mm. The, fact of, the, fact of, the fact of what we're having in terms of lack of food is based on the government policy of removal of subsidy. Mm. I mean, in the Western world, till today, they are giving subsidies to farmers. Farmers are receiving subsidies to go and farm. I'll give example of people that I knew that used to farm about 30, 40 hectares. Today, they can't even farm five. Because they can't go from place to place and then begin to find a way by which they can deal with the issue of, of transport. I'll give an example, even myself as sitting down here, 
I was, what, I was into farming. I used to farm six, seven, eight, nine, ten hectares. But last, this last day, I only farmed two hectares because I don't have the capacity to, to have petrol to go to my farm and begin to, to, to collect them. So, you see, that's a large amount that has been taken from me alone. So you discover that the same thing goes also to many other people in the farming industry. Many people drop their farming because they can't afford the petrol to either run their tractors, they can't afford the petrol to run their the gas, to run their diesel, to run their, their, their tractors. They can't afford anything. So they stopped it. So the whole thing is that it can be mounted as the main problem is this issue of fuel increase. It was just on, on Nigerians were unprepared for. And then the structures on ground to deal with that increase was not there. And when the, the, the president made the pronouncement, he might have even made it as a joke passing by. But he did not even make, know that the impact of it, the marketers, or what I call the Sherlocks. They are Shylocks because they are looking for ways of capitalizing on it and so that they can hold the petrol in their, in their, in their tanks and begin to sell it at an inflated rate. They immediately jacked up their, their, their prices. And when the prices were jacked up, people did not know how to get to their farms. So when they did not know how to get to their farm, couple up with the contemporary situation of banditry and the issue of killing farmers in the farm, what do you expect? And even the one that they are saying that should open the global the, 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 the border, it will not help issue because the whole world is losing the issue of farming, food. Food prices have gone up everywhere in the world. So the essence is to, to, to create a very, very nice situation where we will produce food locally. But where are we having issues of security? Everywhere, challenges everywhere, farms have been destroyed by others. And this is just a self-made issue that we made ourselves into. So the president actually, to a large extent, said he was going to do a policy that was going to help us, but I know that they did not help. Instead, it increased the, the poverty index. Okay, I, I would still like you to highlight some of these economic uh, policies of President Bola Metunubu. I have I've seen the uh, Minister of Finance and Coordinating Minister of the Economy talking about uh, Mr. Edu on the floor of the Senate saying that uh, these policies by President Bola Metunubu is already yielding results. And uh, as we speak right now, still talking about commodities in the market, goods, uh, rice is about 70,000 per bag. Uh, and then you, you talk about beans, the like of beans, and then others. Like I said earlier on, some small businesses that I know are already packing up because they cannot actually afford it. Now, let's look at this policy. Some people continue to highlight that, that like the minister actually said, that already it's yielding results. Maybe Nigerians are, 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 are just not patient enough because we've seen how that the president says, please be patient. Be patient. These things are for the good of, of, of the economy and the general well-being of Nigeria. Some people are alleging that, see, if he didn't tour this path, if he didn't come up with policies such as the removal of um, the fuel subsidy and also the floating near exchange rate, maybe there wouldn't be a country like Nigeria already. And, and apparently that's why the minister is saying, oh, it's already yielding um, results. What, what do you make of some of these policies by President uh, Bola Metinubu and then the implications that Nigerians are, only, are already faced with? Because the common man on the street, no matter what you tell him, he cannot relate. If he cannot go to the, if he can go to the market and then he cannot afford, because right now people are already protesting and saying, we cannot even afford the one square meal. So I want you to speak to these policies and the, uh, um, the, the likes of uh, Mr. Edu say that is already yielding results. I mean, I, I, I'm surprised by some of these things that people say. Mm -hmm. I mean, look at it from the word go. Today I was listening to the former Central Bank Governor. Mm -hmm. The issue is that you don't print money when there is no contrasting value that will go with it. Mm -hmm. We have been printing money, minting money as if it is out of that of ED, I mean, minting surpluses money, currency out trillions when we are actually producing below the trillions. And so you discover that definitely inflation must take in. So there's nothing that we can call... Pro well, the person who said that Nigerian policies are actually yielding the result, they may be yielding the result to his pocket because he's carrying a lot of money that has to do with the government. Because you see, the, the manner in which our governmental systems are set up, in such a way that once you have power, you have surplus money coming around you. And so the surplus money is entering his pocket, he's able to see it, so he thinks that something is yielding result. You measure that by going to the villages, going to where the local people are staying, and you discover that many people cannot afford to eat. And when people are not affording to eat, they are telling us, what result is he using? Yielding what? Yielding result to the air or yielding it to the birds or what? The monetary policy is even faulty because you are supplying more money than you are supply, than your capacity to produce. So inflation must take place. There's nothing that can be done about the inflation until the right policies are put in front. And then the issue of subsidy must come back. If subsidy must come back, then you have to set up structure. You can't tell them that you can't deal with people who are, are bending the, the, the rules. For example, look at the policy of AK-5. 
the central, the 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 the, the, the NNPC. NNPC never used to remit its money to the central bank. I mean, only God knows how NNPC people became so rich. They became fatting like the cows of Bashan. They are so fat because they get a lot of money from NNPC. Today I was making a, a, a chat with somebody, and he told me that there was a man that he knew that worked with NNPC, and he had about six to sixty billion in his in his, in his personal account. So there's so much money going into personal account. When you see people like that are taking money into personal account, it's not a reality that they are. That's a reality that is happening everywhere. People are taking money into personal accounts. So they are banking money. They are putting money in their personal accounts. And that creating inflation. There's more money printed than actually the amount of value that is supposed to be. So definitely inflation will skyrocket. And then the issue of telling me that fuel subsidy brings uh, is wrong. Because why? Everywhere in the world, farmers are subsidized. Everywhere, Europe, they subsidize farmers. You know, it's not too long ago that you find out that farmers came, in, came up in the European Union. They came out and then they, they blocked the European Union. It's not too long ago that farmers came out in Germany. Not too long ago, in fact, there are some of them coming that came out in France. They blocked the state so that the state must give themselves a degree of subsidy. So if farming is not subsidized, then of course there will be food shortage. And if you understand the fact that the issue of Ukraine versus Russian war is creating a lot of impact in terms of fertilizer production, and if you look at that in consequence of the fact that the Naira value is going down, so the cost of fertilizer will definitely be going up. And when the cost of fertilizer is going up, what happens? The cost of production also will go up. And then transport of this food from local communities into the cities is expensive. So what do you expect of it? You expect a lot of things to increase. The farmer who actually is the person that farms does not get much from it. It is the middleman that actually buys it and takes it out and sells it, and then he makes a lot of money out of it. So by virtue of everything that you see around, I mean, it has, and then when you talk of banditry, it has reached a point now that all over Plateau State, bandits are entering places and houses and taking produce from people's farms. They will go in there with a big lorry and you ask yourself a question, how does that kind of a lorry go anywhere? They will go in there with their big lorries and they will go and then stop the people from moving their foodstuff. They will move those foodstuff into their own lorries and go away. And, and, and you ask yourself a question, why is this thing going on that way? So it is even going to be worse next year because nobody wants to go to farm that bandits will go and take it away. Mm -hmm. So even where there are farmers, there is a lot of jeopardy going on. So there is nothing about the policy that helps. If for any reason, then subsidy is to be brought. At least if people can prove that they are farming, certain degree of subsidies must be given to them. I know that before now there are a lot of complaints around um, the issue of insecurity, the impact on even production because we've seen how that in the north there were instances where people were even kidnapped at, on the farm. We've seen instances where people, uh, 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 farms produce uh, like are being destroyed and at the end of the day people are wondering what happens if, if these farms are, are being uh, invaded upon, if the farmers cannot actually go to farm then what, what happens? We've had people predicting even before now that there will be hardship, there will be shortage of food supply in the market because of insecurity majorly and then the fact that people cannot even go to their farm and actually even produce anything or, or actually farm. But you see the issue of removal of first subsidy which is one of the economic policies of President uh, Bola Metunubu is one that almost all the presidential candidates said that, oh when I come on board I'm going to take this away. And looking at the protests that uh, um, rocked some of the streets, um, some of the states in Nigeria, you see how that people were saying, oh, can you open the border, especially in Kano, so uh, play cards like, open the border. And the, 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 the government, the committee that the president sets to actually look into this issue of um, hardship, this hunger and the protest, um, just trying to see how the solutions is going to be brought, said that there are people that are hoarding some of these food items. And, and that is one of the reasons that we are seeing high cost of um, uh, pr uh, farm produce or goods generally. So I would like you to actually comment on that. Okay, let me tell you, it is not people going to the farm now. Mm. It is people producing their thing, their crops, harvesting it, taking it to the village, and then the bandits will come and take the houses from your house. They don't even have to do the labor of going to stop you from... They, you go and produce it. They come with their big lorries, show their guns unto you, kill you possible, and take away your produce. So what, what is not, it's not the issue of going to the farm now. It's the issue of the bandits coming. It's happening everywhere in this country. Everywhere. Bandits are going with big lorries, packing food, and stealing it and going away with it. So it's not the issue of, of, of farmers alone. The reality is that along our borders, there are so many stores in these countries that are, we are bordering Niger, uh, Benin Republic, and some of these places. These are the, where we get the food from. Mm. 
they, are, they have produced stores that are holding millions and millions and millions of grains there. And the essence of it is to do what? To make sure that the country is starved of food. But the issue is that we have enough to produce in our own state, in Nigeria, to deal with the issue of hunger. But because the right impetus are not put forth, so that is it's true that, of course, we have all these things all over the place. There are stores. I am telling you, I happened to pass through these borders one day, and you can find somebody with 50 stores, storing up to about 50,000 or 60,000 or 70 or 80 or 100,000 this thing of grain, with the hope that when the price goes, they can sell. So there's, there's this control that the, 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 the food merchants are doing that. I call them conflict entrepreneurs because why? They hope that that will create conflict and then of course the country will be in problem. Mm. And you know the bad side to the story which actually makes me a bit fearful is that the common man is reacting. Mm. That is very, very fearful. Mm. That reaction is becoming spontaneous. Mm. I'm sure that whoever organized the riot or the different strikes in the different places do not go and even to every household to say, come out, come out, come out, let's go and do riot. But because they actually organized a few who came out, those who are also feeling spontaneously entered the strike. And then there was the, the pandemonium that we find in Kano and, and, and Niger State. I happen to have been to Niger State. I did a, work, a lot of work in Niger. And I know what is there. Yes, there is the fact that there is lack of food. There is lack of these things. But then there are other bandits that take care of these things. And then they, they use it as a principle to create uh, the, the, the contemporary situation that we find ourselves. So when the common man is reacting, be careful with it because it can happen spontaneously. That's when revolutions take place. The revolutions take place because the common man has been pushed to what, what can a calendar or call the corner of Gonomo. And when he reaches that corner, definitely he will turn. And he's turning back. And that's the danger that the system should understand the fact that the common man is reacting. And when they react and the final is, I'm a university lecturer, but I'm telling you, if I receive my salary today, I'm not too sure I can buy food enough for my family for the whole year. I mean, for the whole month. Talk about of going to buy petrol. That kind of, many of us are trekking now. We don't even use cars again. It's really clear and obvious that people are revolting due yeah. to hardship and actually yeah. pain. Yeah. And uh, like you rightly said, uh, the danger is the common man on the street touring uh, uh, the street saying yeah. that, see, we are tired, enough is actually enough. And that's what we saw in Kano. It started with Niger and Kano, but later on, on do, uh, some parts of Abuja, uh, we also saw how that some youths in Oshun State also were protesting uh, against this hardship and, and then hunger. Some people barely have enough to even feed talk more of meeting up with their some basic necessities. Someone just made a post and said, it's really even uh, a cost to be sick now because mm -hmm. even drugs are also yeah. on the high yeah. side. So you begin to, to wonder what actually is the role of the government in all of this because people actually elected their leaders based on trust and, and they, it is expected that a leader thinks about the next generation, a leader thinks about his followers, but the narrative out there is that people are saying our leaders are living in luxury and we are living in hunger. But I, I just really hope that the right thing is going to be done, even though in um, response to the protest, um, the president actually set up a committee to look, uh, emergency food intervention committee to actually look into the protest and how that they can um, look into the hunger issue and make sure that food is actually available and accessible. And in response to that, we, we saw how that the president ordered that 100,000 tons of food items to be released from the National Strategic Re uh, Reserve, even though some people have been speaking, uh, what methodology are you going to use to share? I hope it's not going to be like the case of the palliative that at the end of it was still hoarded, that people had to break in. We saw how that in some states, due to hunger, due to pain, hardship, some people had to just break into some of these uh, palliative houses to get food for themselves. So the president actually ordered for 100,000 tons of food items to be released from the National Strategic Reserve. Also, there was the issue of importation of essential commodities so that it can be available and then uh, prices can um, probably go down. But are you, are you really concerned about this immediate, uh, as the committee tell me that this is just some immediate measures to cushion the effect? And this is not even the first time we're seeing you. You will recall that Following the removal of the first subsidy, there were some measures uh, put in place to push on the effect. And one of it is the 35,000 for civil servants to effective, I think, September last year. But I don't know how, how many civil servants have been able to receive it consistently. And uh, if we're saying this is to push on the effect, what exactly can it push on that 5,000 today? Mm -hmm. So uh, some of which is sharing of palliative. And you know, the term palliative in itself is something like you give to somebody that is almost dying. 
So uh, is this actually good enough at the time that we are in? The reality is that there's nothing that can be done that can be good on that level because you're turning Nigerians into beggars. We're not beggars, for God's sake. So you give us palliative because we're begging. And let us look at this issue of importation of food. The importation of food is done in what currency? It's in dollars. So will you import food for one measure for $1, 1500 and then you come and sell one measure of rice for 300 naira? You must sell it, of course. When you put the importation, you must pay the price of, 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 of bringing the, the goods in. You must pay the price. So at the end of the day, that food that is bought for 1500 naira, which is $1, will end up with $3. So how, can you, how is that going to help? That's not going to help at all because the cross of the dollar is still out. So you are not going to have anything that will help in terms of the, the, the various policies. And the fact is that you look at the content with which we have, the content of the food that will be brought into this country. Mostly it is what is rice. That is what they, they, they bring. The issue is that most of the time you hardly find mess coming in. And then where are you importing this food from? Asia. Why is, how is Asia going with the issue of fertilizers? With the contemporary problem that's happening in Ukraine and Russia, which is almost amount, counting, amounting to about 60% of the fertilizers that we produce in the world. So where is it coming from? So we must use this as an opportunity to make sure that our local production is, is, is lifted up. And then you must make sure that the farmer who goes to the bush actually has enough security. Security in terms of the fact that we must actually allow a certain degree of decentralizing the security because the security is contemporarily run by a few people. And when the money comes, what the security men do their own things. And at the end of the day, it doesn't get with the people who are in the bush doing the security. So the people find ways by which they can also make their own, by compromising security to make their own. So it's a complex thing that goes around and around and around and around again. At the end of the day, nothing seems to come up. There are a lot of people that actually take their time to prevent, to circumvent every policy that the government comes with. And nobody has the will to arrest them. This is where the problem is. No one has the will to say, look, this person is circumventing the, let us do something about it. I want to the, 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 use the principle of mercy. He's the brother of the brother of the brother of the, this person. So he doesn't need to obey the law. When the leaders themselves begin to obey the law, and they show examples of the, them obeying the law, I mean, you will see it happen. I'll give you one example now. I'm not pressing anybody. But in our state in Plato, for example, I, I, the, the state governor set up a committee to look at schools and how they were administered. Because for the past 20 years, nothing was done. And he discovered so much fraud. And when he sacked some of the people that went to the school, he discovered that there was a protest. When these people are involved in fraud, clearly he sacked them and brought in to in inject new blood so that things can work. People are protesting. So the question is, do we like the corruption to continue? And when we're saying we blame the government, so it's not just government alone, but people themselves don't have the will to even make things work. The people don't have the will to make things work. The government doesn't have the will to make things work. So everybody is living by the skin of his teeth. And that's why, at the end of the day, it can lead to anarchy. And, and, and it's always at the detriment of the common man. Oh, of course. Uh, earlier on, you were speaking of fear that if the common man tore the streets, uh, what it might result yeah. to. The TUC and then the NUC have actually issued 14 days strike notice to the government over its failure to implement a uh, 16 point agreement following the removal of the uh, petrol subsidy and then the devaluation of NERA. You will recall that it has been like a uh, back and forth um, issue with NL, between NLC, TUC, and the federal government. At some points, like the two bodies were going separate path. Oh, we, we are not going for a strike. The federal government has done some of the demands we gave, but at the end of the day, we've seen these two bodies coming together and see that federal government have failed. Though we gave them time, but still they are, they are yet to implement some of the agreement that we've made, part of which is the 35,000 to civil servants to help push on the effect of the removal of the first subsidy. Now, not just TUC and L N um, NLC, uh, I think the two weeks alternate begins 9th of February, which is today. And then Pengasa are saying we will join. NATO are saying we will also join. The senior staff uh, air transport uh, are also saying that they will also join in this um, strike. What sense do you make of this? L like looking at the reality that we're already faced with all of these bodies going on strike. You see, the thing with Nigeria is that we go on strike without implementation. People will go, have a strike, when there's a palliative made to their pockets, mm. they come back and they say the government are doing something. Mm. So most strikes sometimes actually is the impact of getting what the officials of the strike unions are trying to get for their pockets. 
and then the common man is still there left on his own. But the issue is that we have to tell ourselves the truth that we need sacrificial leadership. Sacrificial leadership both in the unions and sacrificial leadership by the government. When we strike, what is it that comes out of the strike? It's not when you sit down with the government. ASU tried that. We said no until ASU sees a lot in a bank account before they can move. What happened? The government went, did all the magumau they can do, and then deprived ASU of 10 months salary. The same thing also that these other people are scared. If we throw the side of ASU, and then we say we must see implementation before we call back, before you know, they will be jailed. So the rule of law is not, is not following. Strike action is a reaction of the people. It should be given the opportunity to say, people should be able to give the opportunity to say no. And when they are given the opportunity to say no, and they say no, no should be no, and yes should be yes. So it's not a question of just telling people, we are going on strike, and you do the strike after two days, you call up the strike, and the strike has no meaning. And, and, and then when they offer you things that you know that has no meaning, for example, 35 plus 35, let, let, let's, let's, let's ask ourselves a question. How many, uh, what is the percentage that you increase the, 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 the cost of the petrol? By about 300%. They are given 30%. What is that? In what way is it cushioning the impact? From 300% or 400% increase. Then you go, you tell me now that you are trying to make sure that it comes down, and then you are giving a palliative of 35,000. Which most of us civil servants have not seen anyone, maybe one or two months. And this time I see that I get angry because I feel as if I'm a beggar. <laughs> it's it's so, so funny. It annoys me a lot when I see that 35,000. It's like mocking at me. When they know that billions are running into people's hands and they are playing around, playing out, holding parties going abroad as if they are going to their villages. All right. The ruling of Progressive uh, or Congress said that the protests that rocked some states in, in, in the Federation was orchestrated by opposition parties. Like, uh, I was really wondering, is this not a reality that everyone can actually relate to? Like I said earlier on, bag of rice is almost 70,000 naira. When you go to the market, the prices of items daily keeps going up. And the increase on e goods is not just by 10%, 20 or 50%. It's over 100% increase. And in some cases, 300% increase. And yet... The ruling of Progressive Congress is saying that this protest that we're seeing, it is the opposition party that actually gathered some people and said, go and protest. And they are just trying to make the, 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 uh, this administration that is performing real well look bad in the eyes of the public. Do you not see as this as insulting the, the sensitivity of the situation that Nigeria is faced with, the current hardship that people are going through? It was amidst this hardship that we've seen the president saying, Please be patient. I understand the pain that you're going through. But yet, a political party, the ruling of Progressive Congress is saying that, see, this thing is just mere games. It's being orchestrated. I, I don't know what sense you make of this statement. To me, it's even contradictory. Mm. It's the same government saying that you are going through pains. Mm. Same government saying that you have no right to cry. For example, the people are going through pains. They want to cry by protest. Then you say, no, they should not cry. It is because the opposition party is organizing this business. Opposition party is organizing what? The people's stomachs are empty. A hungry man is what? An angry man. Very simple logic. But you see, what they are doing is that, let me tell you why I'm having a problem with these issues. What they are doing in Nigeria is we're doing what we call the Machiavellian theory. And Machiavelli said that if you want to rule a people, make them hungry. When you make them hungry, you will actually have them coming at your feet, bowing down and begging. And then you throw stipends at them. That Machiavellian theory is used by Nigerian leaders all over the place. They are using it as principle to enslave the people so that they can listen to them when they come and say, ah, Baba, Baba, how are you? When you throw stipend at them and they go and struggle after the stipend. He had took it further by plucking the, the feathers of, feathers of a, a, a chicken that was starved and then kept throwing the grain and people were following him. So they are using Machiavellian theory. It's not that they don't know. The leadership doesn't know that people are suffering. But to them, until the people suffer and then the little that is given to them, they'll come back. And look at it. All Nigerians are becoming beggars. You go to the, 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 the corridors of power. There's a lot of lies. There's a lot of fallacies. There's a lot of pretense. There's a lot of things going, going on in that place. Why are these things so? Because people are trying their best to make sure that they survive. When, when we, there's a saying we say to my dialect that when water has taken you away and you are running, even if you see in water and you are drowning, 
if you see a snake, you will catch it. Because at that moment, anything matters. Nothing matters apart from survival. It's getting to a point where Nigeria now, nothing matters apart from survival. It's, 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 it's funny. So there's nothing like opposition parties organizing this. These are simultaneous movements. These are very, very simultaneous movements. And this is dangerous because even when you are trying your best and the people react simultaneously, I mean, you don't need to be told about rap doing answers. Answers were simultaneous. I remember, let me tell you, there was a time in Nigerian history that there was a lot of starvation and there were no food on the street. And I also happened to lead a group of pastors to one of the Nigerian leaders, I don't want to call names. And I told him, I said, sir, please, uh, this issue is happening. There's no food in the... And then the, the, that leader was actually a military man. He gave order immediately for food to be important. At that time, of course, the dollar was low, so food came in at a low price and then people had it. But now we have a high dollar, so what will you do? You are still going to subsidize the agri. Because when you import the rice, you can't sell the rice at the price you import it because nobody can buy it. So you must subsidize the rice to sell it to them. So why don't you produce, you get subsidy offer to the people that actually are going to produce the rice so that they can have it to eat. I was producing rice that time. I produced sometimes up to about 200 bucks, 300 bucks. But now I don't even have a bag of rice in my house. Why? Because the price, the cost of production has gone too high for me to do it. I can't be going from here to my farm. Every going, I must pay up to about a hundred and something thousand. Where will I get that money from? When my salary is not even up to anything to write home. So I had to stop the rice production. And millions of people stopped it. So removing the subsidy has become an irony. Because the subsidy that you remove, you have to pay food for food with it. So why don't you leave the people to produce the food and then continue the issues? So when government take policies, they don't look at the implication. And then what really marvel is the fact that they remove it at a very high rate from 300 to 600 or from 150 to 600 instead of taking progressive removal so that with time things can work up you just remove everything Shh, thinking that nigerians are magicians where they don't have money and you have the money all packed up with you people in your political class i know that we are five and we are having problems with the value of naira and then you are going about to move the subsidy for people to do what go and look for food where it's, it's really clear that Nigerians are really struggling to survive yeah. because uh, now it's no longer a case of uh, one, zero, one. As in no, terms no. of feeding, people just do zero, one, zero, and they just sleep and trust God for the next day. But I, I wanted to really speak to the government for these measures of, oh, we're going to release 100,000 tons of food items. How long and how like how many people will say, oh, I've received the, the last palliative that was shared. I don't know if it has reached to your house, but I can't, I can't really to receive it, anything. But then, what are the practical measures that the government can actually put in place to cushion this hardship? The, the, the problem here, the concern is, it, it's really something that everyone can relate to, that in, a, a hungry man is an angry man. And then when, when that hungry man toward the street, it might be something that nobody would want to see. So, because, like, the governor of Kano is already crying, like, my people are dying of starvation. What they receive as income cannot even, yeah. can merely feed, barely feed them, talk more of other necessities. So, what practical measures can the government put in place or do to cushion this hardship that Nigerians are going through, to cushion the, the hunger, the pain that the people are into? Because the essence of government is to make life better for the people, not to make life worse. This is nine months into this administration. And some people are saying, no wonder uh, uh, former president Mohamed Dubai says, when, when, when I leave, maybe you appreciate. But some people are saying, see, what we, the impact, what we are facing now is as a result of some of the policies, some of the decisions that were taken long before now. <laughs> what practical steps and measures can the government take? The question is, will government not be able to reverse the decision they took? What brought this problem? into being is the fact that there's a removal of subsidy. That's the first thing of the trolley. Uh, there's a proverb that the husband says, traveling is better than sitting down and killing your trousers. Let me use literal, literal translation. Mm. That implies that when you travel, your ideas grow better and you can produce. Now, when you restrict the people to sit in one place, they cannot travel, what happens? They don't produce. So this is the first thing. Government should say on this issue of saying that they have to remove subsidy of petrol. I mean, where is the money of the subsidy of removing? We're not seeing anything. You know, the government said that some of the sectors are actually suffering because of the subsidy, so they are removing so that Nigerians can feel the impact on other sectors. Which but sector? you asked the question, Which where, where is it? Which <laughs>
The question is which sector? Mm. The sector of the personal pockets of the political class. Mm. That's all. But then the poor man on the street, which policies, because government is supposed to defend those who are powerless. Mm. That's the sense of government. Mm. The law defends the powerless, not the powerful. Mm. But an Nigerian law defends who? The powerful. That's number one. Subsidy must be actually brought back. Number two, there must be a restriction on the production of the Naira. But are you not concerned that this uh, subsidy with the subsidy there are issues of, issues of um, siphoning of um, money? I think it was in 2012 that a committee was even set to investigate this issue, issue of subsidy. Some say it's just come. It's just going to personal pocket and all of that like are you not concerned about because i've seen how that some of these presidential can we will remove it it's just a few nigerians that enjoy at the detriment of all nigerians it's a very simple thing joyce it is the fact that you must make the law to work the law must prosecute all these people that are doing these things you bring them out show us who they are prosecute them take them through the prosecution and then let nigerians be ready that their brothers can be prosecuted if not we, we can't sacrifice ourselves we're going to die like the mice, which put themselves into one hole, and then the fire will come there, and everyone tried to run, and then they will enter the fire. We're going to die like mice. So that is why the will of the government to take ra ra drastic actions, regardless of whoever, even if it's your wife as a, man, a member of the government, uh, that is doing something, you, 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 you expose the person. And then that will, will help us to deal with the issue. Subsidy is not a problem. It is the abuse of the subsidy that is the problem. So why can't we throw away the abuse and take back the baby? Why do we have to throw away the bath water and the baby? No, we don't have to throw the things away. If subsidy is what will help us, then let's go back to subsidy and find ways of dealing with these issues. Hey, there was a time in Nigeria that we had board control, control board that control the prices of things. Yes. I remember in the 80s, when we used to go to buy milk and they go to a shop and they say, you're stealing milk for 1,000 for, 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 for about uh, a 10 kobo. Because milk then was selling, sold for one, two couple. And they say that you are selling for 10 couple, they also seize it, confiscate it, sell it out to the people at a, a, a lower rate. Mm. So when you go to the houses where these people, because Nigerians are holding issues, mm. go to where these people are holding, and then you give orders that this thing must be sold at it. But then you also have to make sure that the importation is also lower. So it's like it's going around the same circle over and over and over again that we must have strict rules, that we must also learn financial discipline. That we must also learn to fact, know the fact that we are giving too much money out to the political class. And our political politics is becoming what? All this banditry and all the things because the political class has too much money. And so others are saying, well, since we give the money, let's go there. Oh, we go to the bush, carry our guns. And, and, and the thing is that banditry is not actually a prerogative for only one tribe. Now it is becoming, every tribe is beginning to develop band, bandits. Because once you have the gun, going to the hands of the normal people, the next thing is to, how can I use this gun to get something for myself? It's a survival of the fittest. It's a rat race. No wonder the, the, the high rate of crimes. Like yeah. It's becoming more attractive to people. Yeah. A lot of young people, are, why, why go to school and just yeah. spend years when yeah. I will end up unemployed? Uh -huh. uh, why will I do this when I know there's no reward for it? Maybe crime pays. A lot of people are actually throwing that part. But uh, well, why we encourage people to desist from such acts? The government must be deliberate about doing the right thing. But in, in all of this, are there lessons for Nigerians? The fact is that Nigerians should learn the fact that one, hard work pays, and two, self-discipline is very, very important because we are a Western community. We are a Western community because everybody wants to do birthday. Mm. Huh? People who cannot eat, when they go and show you the amount of money they use for birthday, haha, <laughs> you'll wonder. I live in the West. I never saw anybody doing birthday, <laughs> and I come here and everybody is asking, Elias, when will you do birthday? I said, birthday for what? <laughs> And most of the people that are doing but they don't even know the day they were born because they were not born at the time that there were records. So that is the issue. West one. Calvin Klein says he sells billions during Christmas and the black race is very good at celebrating a festival that has, has, has I, I, that, that will, if Christ was to come, he would be angry with people celebrating some of his Christmas and the way they are doing it. It's supposed to be a time that we should take care of those Christ came for the needy. It's a time for taking care of the needy. But what are we doing in Christmas? What are we doing during the time of Salah? All these things we are celebrating, we are showing money flamboyantly, and then we throw all the billions and we become hungry. After what? So we must put aside this issue of festive life. 
where we do festivals on everything. I'm sure very soon Nigerians will do festival on, 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 on even entering their house. We must learn to put aside these excessive festive periods, festival that we're doing. And then we must also learn the discipline of our own stomach because the stomach itself is a one big problem. People eat and eat and eat and don't even control it. That's why the black race is always what? Black, very, very fat. We should learn this discipline. So we need to learn a lot of discipline. There is so much that we need to learn. Our parents used to do it. And then we have, we've, we've thrown away this discipline. Now if you don't have money, nobody looks at you. If you have money, you can utter anything and go free. You can buy Chief Tansi title. You can buy this. You can buy that. You can buy that. So everybody wants to do what? Get the money. And that is where morality is thrown to what? To the ground. And then people are not living by the standard that will help the community. They are living by the standard that will help their own, their own, uh, their own purse. And their personal gains. And the personal gain is one of the problems that is creating problems. So if I am able to use and to get gain, and I get out and everybody respects me, this issue of respecting people because they are rich is another problem. Ah, you have money, you can do whatever you want to do. These are issues that we must go back to and look at the totality. I remember there was time we had this ethical committee which looked at ethical issues. We need to look at this, some of these ethical issues. We need to go back to discipline. We need to go back to respect. We need to go back to restraint. We need to go back to issues of putting, throwing away our wealth. And you find civil servants, when they are in government, they will be affluent, they will be fat, they will be fat. And then when they get out of government, give them one month to discover they deflate. Why? Because they could not even plan for, for, for retirement. The retirement takes them by surprise. And they retire and there's nothing they can go for. it. No hobby, nothing. So they die early. University professors are facing that. And so we must learn to the issue of planning. Let me tell you what happened. I'll give you an example. I live in Brabant which is a, a community within the Belgium community. And the richest person there was having a type of a, 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 a fort that, oh my God, it was terrible looking. Yet he was a rich person. That's why they say that poor people wear things as if they are rich and rich people wear things as if they are poor. These are some of the issues. Poverty is eating us up and we are worried to show off. And these are some of the problems that bring problems in this country because everybody wants to show off, to say, I have it, I have it. Why must you show off? Why? Self-discipline. And Jiras themselves have to learn this act of self-discipline where they will sit down together and ask themselves, the thing you are past, you are having in your house, is it all the boxes that you have in terms of the wrappers and the zeni and the everything that you have, is it really necessary? Where you can only wear one <laughs> trouser, one shirt at a time. And then you discover that there are things that you bought, you kept in your dress clothes that you can't wear them for two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, five weeks, even sometimes for one year. Why all these excesses? Well, are there roles that our representatives can actually play? Because, you know, Nigeria practices representative government. Because we, we all cannot be at the National Assembly to make laws or to make decisions. And that's why we go out there at the polls to elect people to go and represent us. It, it, it's, it's almost like our representatives are just quiet about the whole thing. Uh, what role can they play? Let me, let me give you one example of a man I loved. I grew to respect. I grew to respect a person called Solomon La. Not because he's from my place, but whenever any money comes to Solomon Lad, he says this, this is not my money, this is people's money. You get me? Whenever anything comes to him in terms of power, he will say, this is not my own power base, this is people's power base. He doesn't superimpose candidates, he doesn't force himself on people. If he sees you running away from him, I remember there was time we had a problem with him, my uncle. And I ran away from Baba, and for five years he was looking for me. So you see, we must learn, the representatives must learn leadership by example. They must learn humility in leadership. You are given the leadership you have given, not because you are better than anybody else. You are given that leadership because it is important for you as a person to serve others, not just to be served. Christ came, the prophet Muhammad came, and they did all they did to serve the people, not to do what? To be served. No, become kings. And that's what is creating a problem. Today we have a lot of things that are going on that are wrong because of self-seeking capacities of Nigerians. And that's why it has eaten up. So you see, nobody can stand to point finger at anybody and say, look, stop that. You can't correct anybody when you are doing the same thing. So these are issues that we're going through in this country. The capacity to be self-serving becomes an important paradigm. Serve yourself. Serve yourself. So everybody wants to get into government to do what? Serve myself and get out. Ah, no, 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 we must return this government from one. When a person is good at leadership, leave him, let him lead. I'm an academia. 
I'm not very good at leadership. Leave me and let me go and do my academia. I am a farmer. If I'm not very good, let me go and farm. Why must I? Because I have gotten some money, then I'll leave farming and go back to become a politician. There are people who are given that gift for political class. Let them go and do political politicking. There are those who are given the gift of development. Let them go and develop. There are those who are good at teachers. Let them go and teach. Everybody contributes to the bank and everybody must be given the same respect. It is a disparity of respect between Nigeria that is creating the problem because the political class is highly respected and given too much. That is number one issue. We must reduce the cost of governance. Thank you. It's indeed our collective responsibility to make Nigeria better and great. It is not uh, a responsibility of just one individual, nope. but we must all put our hands on deck. And it is also the responsibility of the citizens to be deliberate about electing leaders, leaders who think about the next generation and not just politicians that are just interested in the next election and are only interested in their personal uh, uh, pocket. So we, we do hope that... Uh, Nigerians will be deliberate about playing their own role as citizens. Thank you so much for creating time to speak with us on National Talk. And to our viewers out there, this is how far we'll go on the program. Thank you so much for staying with us on today's edition of National Talk. Remember that democracy is the theory that the common people know what they want and deserve to get it real good and hard. Until we'll come your way next week, same time. You be blessed. Bye-bye.